Today, we're going to geek out about Seat Wars. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Lee from Geek City USA here. And today we're going to take a look at a game that's on Kickstarter right now called Seat Wars. Now Seat Wars is a, a light card game for two to four players that plays in about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on who you're playing with. And we're going to take a look at the gameplay and then I'll come back here and I'll give you my review of the game. All right, guys, so this is Seat Wars. Let me preface this whole thing by saying this is a print and play copy that I put together and is not indicative of the final version and the final product that you will receive. Uh, the final product will be a much higher quality. This is just for illustration purposes. So let me start by showing you the different types of cars. So in Seat Wars, you are going to be placing people into different seats on the bus. So for example, here we have the crazy hobo and you would, in turn, on your turn, place him on a seat in a bus, right? If you look here, every character has multiple values. This right here is their attack strength. So, for example, this guy is a, is a 9. And so, somebody would need to have a 10 or higher to take his seat from him and kick him out of his seat. This number right here is the number of points that he scores, if you score him at the end of the round, or in the next round. And this value down here is his minimum scoring value, and there are some cards that require you to score by their minimum value. And right here is some text as to um, maybe what special power that he has. For example, the Crazy Hobo, it says characters cannot be placed next to this card. So nobody could sit next to this guy, probably because he's crazy and, you know, possibly gross. Who knows? There are other cards... Um, for example, this character, Frankie. Now, if you notice, Frankie has an orange square. Now, any characters who are placed that have an orange square, when you place them in a seat, you will in turn place an item card, in this case a grocery bag, in the seat next to that. Now, the grocery bag operates much in the same way the players do. It has a value here, so in this example, six, and a, a point, the number one. And for example, if this were sitting here, any player who has a higher than a six could sit in this spot and then that player would immediately take this card and be able to score it. For example, this guy would not be able to because he is a six, so we would need something larger or higher than that. Now there are item cards, for example, this card here is the baby, and this card adds a uh, point value to a player that you're going to sit down. So for example, if you have this guy sitting here, he's got a six. This guy could not steal his seat. However, if you place him with the baby, he would be worth seven now, and he would be able to upset Don Leibovitz and steal his seat, thus discarding him. There are other cards, for example, this Reach Destination card in which this basically says, upon playing this card, you play this immediately from your hand, and that allows you to score your character card by his lower value. So for example, I could play this guy out of my hand, and I would score him by the number three, and he would be worth six points now, instead of the basic five. And he would immediately go into my scoring pile. And there are also other event cards. For example, this one says the rat, select one seated character and its owner must score it by its minimum value. So for example, if you have Frankie, if an opponent has Frankie sitting here and I play this card, the opponent would only be able to score Frankie at the number three instead of five points. All right, so each turn a player will have three actions. So for example, if I play Frankie here, that would be one action and he is allowed to place an item card in a seat adjacent to him. That does not count as an additional action. However, if I were to play Don Leibovitz with the baby, that counts as two actions because it is two cards. Also, you may draw a card, uh, one card per action, but you need to do that at the end of the, your turn. So you play all your cards first, and then you may draw a card, or multiple cards. And you may not play them on the same turn that you draw them. On subsequent turns, if you have players on the board, you may score those players. They need to have a full turn on the board, and then you could say for one action, I will score Frankie. 
and Frankie will go into my score pile and he is worth, in this example, five points to me. And then I could score Don as well and he is worth five points to me and we can discard the baby. So what I'm going to do is I will do a quick uh, run through, multiplayer run through, just to give an example of what a few turns of the game will look like. And I'm going to do this as a three player game just to kind of show what it looks like with more players. Um, this board right now is set up for a, a three or four player game. If it were only to be two players, this portion of the board would not be here. So to start, each player will get five cards. All right, what I'll do is I'll place this player is facing this way, this player is facing this way, and this will be me facing this way. So what you do is you will take a look at your hand. Now in this case, I have a whole bunch of character cards. So I can say I will play Nun Healy here. And this says whenever you place her on a, on a seat, you can draw a card from the main deck. So I instantly get to draw a free card here. And I'm actually, I'm going to face her towards me because you're going to face the cards towards the player, uh, towards where the player sits. That way you can see whose cards belong to who. I'll place Frankie here, which allows me to add an item card, and I'll put Nelson here. And that would be the end of my turn. Again, let me spin these cards around so they face me. All right, now this player over here has multiple cards. So first things first, we will say, so Seth Goodman is only worth, only has two action, is worth eight points. So we are going to take Seth and add the baby, making him worth six. And we can put him on top of, uh, let's say, he's worth five points, so let's get rid of Frankie. So I will place him on top of Frankie, six points. Frankie is now discarded. And now this player would hopefully get to score Seth the next turn. Likewise, May Reed will sit right here and will boot Nelson from his seat. And finally, I'm going to play this Miss the Bus event card, which means I'm going to play it on this player. And it says that select an opponent and this player will not be able to draw cards on his turn unless, of course, a player action dictates that they are able to. So they would never be able to up their cards from here. So I will play that on this player. And that is the end of player two. Now player three is going to go ahead and look at his cards. And he's going to take DJ D-Bag and he's going to upseat, upset Seth Goodman, get him out of his seat. That guy's gone now. That is my son's favorite card right there. I'll face him this way. And then I'm going to have Archie Castle sit here where this grocery bag is, and Archie Castle will end up getting, or and this player will end up getting one point for that. And that is two actions. And then for a third action, decides to do this, move over, which says to score one player from, or one character from your hand by its minimum value and draw two cards from the main deck. So he'll go ahead and score this player, Gladys Sinclair, and get three points. And then as a result, get to draw two additional cards. So even though the player over here played a card that said I could not draw any cards out of the deck, this player card told me that I could and that was perfectly allowable. Now it's back to my turn here. So the first thing I'm going to do is score none Healy and that will give me four points at the end of the game. And then I would boot May Reed out of her seat. I would put Archie Castle here and then another May Reed right here. This player can't score anybody because nobody, none of his cards are out here. And he has one card in his hand, Big Bertha, who's got nine attack but it's only worth one point. And best thing to do is look at what would score somebody the most points. So. This right here is worth six points. Big Bertha has an attack of nine. So, sorry, Archie Castle, you can't ride this bus. You have to stand. That was one turn. Now, this player has no more cards, no cards on the board. So we'll draw two cards and end his turn. Now over to this player. It's going to score DJ D-Bag, score Archie Castle, 
and then play uh, Don Leibovitz here. And this says, add plus two to the character's attack value placed on a yellow seat. So he is actually worth uh, eight attack. Comes back to the first player here, which is me. Um, I have no cards. I will score May Reed. I will score Anne Bourne. And I will draw a card because I have no more cards. This player here will score Big Bertha. We'll take a look at his two cards. And we'll play Crazy Hobo here. Now, nobody can sit on either side of the Crazy Hobo. However, there is one character who can. And if somebody should uh, draw that card, they can play it next to, next to in either of these seats. But otherwise, Crazy Hobo has this whole row to himself. And then for the third action, because I can't play that card right now, I'll draw a card. This player will score. And then we'll play, well, we'll play the rat. And it says, uh, select one seated character and its owner must score by its minimum value. So Crazy Hobo is now only worth three points uh, whenever I score him. And then for the last one, I will just draw another card. Back to me, I will score Hobo Joe, and he will score at his minimum. And then I have nothing good in my hand, so I will draw two more cards. This player here has nothing to score. The board is pretty empty. And he's going to play this bump event card, and this card says each opponent discards one card of their choice. So I will discard uh, the baby. And then this player will discard DJ D-Bag. Okay, and lastly, I will draw two. And for this player, this player will play Emma Queen here. Place an item card because of the orange. And then draw two additional cards. And the game play continues until this deck is empty. And then once this deck is empty, let's say uh, this player emptied the deck, everybody else gets one additional turn, ending with the player who drew the last card. At the end of the game, everybody totals up their score points. And the person with the highest score wins the game. And that is Seat Wars. All right, guys, that was Seat Wars. So let's talk about it. So let's talk about the art. So the art on Seat Wars is very simplistic, very comic booky, and it reminds me a lot of like an Archie comic book or the old school Dennis the Menace cartoon, if anybody uh, is around my age and remembers that. Um, and it was, it's, it's very cute, very fun to look at, and uh, I will say that my kids thought it was hilarious. Uh, they caught a lot of the tongue-in-cheek humor and kind of got a kick out of it. So let's talk about the gameplay on the game. So the gameplay uh, is very simplistic, very straightforward, and it's something that you can pick up right away. And it's great for casual gamers, and it's definitely great for families as well. So one of the things that drew me to want to check out this game was that it was, you know, advertised as being geared towards families. And I have a couple of kids, and my oldest being 11, and any time that I'm able to play a game with them is is really a win in my eyes. So I pulled this out, you know, we, we did a couple of test run throughs so I could get comfortable with the game. And I sat down with my, with my kids and, and played through it. And my oldest son in particular caught on right away. He enjoyed the art, he enjoyed the tongue in cheek humor, and he enjoyed the game as a whole. And in fact, he even beat me the first time that he played. And he requested to play again. And to me, when my kids um, look at a game and play a game and then say, hey dad, can we play again? That's really a win in my eyes. Uh, my kids tend to have short attention spans. So if they get one game run through in and then they're done, that's it. You know, that's, that's what you get. But he actually uh, looked forward to playing it again and again. Now this again is, is a light game, so you know if you have your hardcore gamers that are looking for a big 4X game or something, they might not necessarily have their, their gaming uh, itch scratched with this game. However, this is a perfect filler game while you're waiting to play maybe in between other gaming sessions. The game plays quick, so you know if, if you know what you're doing, you could cruise through a game in about 10 minutes. Uh, even if you're, you know, you, like when I play with my kids, 
15, 20 minutes tops and they can cruise through it as well. So this may be the perfect game to play as you're waiting for somebody else to show up for game night or as you're you know, taking a break in between heavier games or you know, this may be the perfect game to pull out if you wanna run through a game and don't wanna get really involved in something. The setup is quick and the playthrough is quick as well. All in all, I think this is an excellent family style game and I think that it's very, very accessible to uh, families and casual gamers and younger gamers. All right, guys, I'm Lee from Geek City USA. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. And be sure to like or subscribe and comment down below. I'd love to interact with you guys. Or uh, head over to our Facebook page and interact with us there. Once again, thanks for checking us out. See you next time.